Hey guys, today we're gonna turn this sketch that we made on paper into a digital image that you can use for a logo design or a t-shirt graphic. This is gonna be a quick and easy way to accomplish this, even if you have no drawing skills. And then we're gonna show you how you can apply this graphic onto a t-shirt. And you could do all this from the comfort of your home. Now let's get started, Cody. Now by no means am I claiming to be good at drawing, I just really wanted to show you guys what is possible. I'm giving my best attempt at this gorilla sketch, but it kinda of ended up looking a little funky. That's all right. Once the pencil sketch was complete, I used a fine tip Sharpie pen and a regular Sharpie marker to make my lines bold and just give myself some clear borders. And I got bad news. My editor hates the drawing, but if you guys like it, you should like the video because if we get a thousand likes, I'm gonna put him in a gorilla costume and send him down the Las Vegas Strip and that'll show him. So I took the picture of my gorilla and I sent it to myself so that I could put it on my computer. If you're using a Mac, you can airdrop from your iPhone to your MacBook or if you're using Android devices or a PC, you just email it to yourself. We're gonna start with a canvas 12 inches by 12 inches with a resolution of 600. If your computer is running slow on 600 resolution, drop it down to 300, you'll be just fine. And we're looking all right. So next we're gonna import our gorilla. Look at this guy, look at, a, look at our gorilla. What a great gorilla. So first things first, I wanted to duplicate my drawing. I'll click on this layer and use Command J. I'm just gonna turn this layer off so that way anything I do to this duplicated gorilla image, it won't affect the original one. If anything messes up, I can just go right back to my original image. We're gonna crop out our gorilla so we don't have the table in our picture anymore, just the white paper. The next thing I'm doing is adding contrast. We're gonna do this by going to the image tab, adjustments, and then levels. Very simple to use levels. It's gonna give us that separation between our dark lines and our white paper. If we take this arrow that's all the way to the right and drag it left, you'll see how our whites brighten up and add that contrast that we're looking for. Now, our highlights are super white. Let's drag this left arrow to the right and our shadows are gonna get super black. And you can already see the difference from before levels and after levels. Mad difference right there. Now I don't really like working with this white background, so we're just gonna change the color of the background. Right click on the layer, click on the words color overlay, and I'm just gonna do sky blue. That sounds good for me. So if we take a look, we got our blue layer behind our gorilla. Easiest way for me to remove the background from the gorilla is this magic eraser. Normally over here on your toolbar, you have your regular eraser. Right click on that and it'll pull up your different erasers. Let's see how well our magic eraser works with this one clip. Oh. So before I use the magic eraser, I'll have to rasterize this layer. And you just right click on it, find where it says rasterize layer, boom. Look at how easy that background got removed. Oh, that was easy. One click. And I still have some bits here and there that need to be cleaned up. Don't worry, we'll get to that. I really wanna just get this gray out of here from the pencil. Click on your paintbrush, then right click to change the hardness to adjust the softness, hardness, however you want it. It'll make the edges a little softer. With this, our paintbrush hardness will be 100. Let's move up to the face, the main attraction. I really wanna clean these up and get rid of all these extra lines in here. You can really use this brush tool to just sharpen your lines. You can go over your interiors and just kind of clean it up. And all those years of art class finally paying off. So we have our selection here. We're on top of the gorilla layer and we're just gonna hit Command J to duplicate that selection. So now everything that's on there is just our pencil marks. It's just a layer of straight pencil marks, guys. And then if we just make this completely black, it'll run perfectly into the gorilla with our levels. So again, take the black slider on our levels, move it to the right. And there you go. I just want it to be a little darker. So brightness and contrast, that's the effect I'm clicking on. We're gonna go brightness all the way to zero. And we're gonna move our contrast all the way up. Let's turn on our gorilla, see what we're looking like. Not too shabby, okay. You can see we still have some weirdness here in the color range though. So we're gonna select our whole gorilla and we're gonna really, really clean this up for a final run. We're gonna desaturate it. So it takes all those weird reds and orange elements out of there. That way I was picking up, don't want that. We're looking pretty good, we're looking pretty decent. Now I'm just working on cleaning up the mouth area, the teeth, the fangs. You can see our blacks are very solid looking. You know, just color over what you need to clean up longer process here. So I'm just gonna grab the white paintbrush to do it. This isn't the only way to go about it, but it's how I like it. Guys, what I'm doing here is I'm just getting this geared up for everything to have very concrete and clear borders so that when I color the gorilla, it knows it sticks to those exact panels. 
And once you do that, you see how easy the paint bucket just fills things in. Click, click, boom, boom. So I think we're in a good spot right now. I like where the line work is and I like where the color is going. This is where we're at. We're looking decent. It's got the color. And I'm wondering if there's any way we can get creative here to make it not look like Y2K internet video style again, but that's the vibe it's giving me right now. And I don't know if there's much I can do about it, but I think we'll actually be able to do something about it. And then once you're done, we're just gonna go to here, export, export as, name your file, and make sure it's a PNG. You have a transparent background, look at that. Now Cody shared a method that will work for all the artists out there, but what if you're not an artist and you still need a graphic design or a logo for your brand? Now a solution for this can be Fiverr. The trick is in finding an artist that can help. Fiverr is one of those platforms where anyone can say they're a graphic designer and take all your money and waste your time. I've personally been scammed out of a few projects, so please proceed carefully and always stay on top of deadlines associated with the project just to be safe. To start your search, you should begin by seeing what is on the market for the design direction that you have. In our example, it's a military patch. So I'll search for patch design or a variation of that keyword. But since I personally wasn't a fan of the portfolios I saw, I'm also gonna search a little broader and expand it to character design. And once you submit payment, the work officially starts. And like I mentioned guys, stay on top of these notifications and report anything suspicious to Fiverr. Let's see what Cody's been up to. While we waited for the Fiverr artist to make our badge, I thought I would try to make one too. But it didn't turn out how I liked it, so we're not gonna use it. Three days later. We finally got the email from Fiverr that our design is ready, so I'm gonna print it out on some iron-on heat transfer and cut that out on my Cricut to really see how it fits on a shirt. Woo guys, our Fiverr artist came in clutch with this badge design. Looks like I can throw away my sad excuse of a logo. And before we put this gorilla on the shirt, I just wanna make sure I'm not gonna waste any of my material. To do that, I'm gonna use this little website by the name of placeit.net. Using placeit to try out different sizes and positions on my shirts has saved me tons of time and has avoided mess ups on my blanks. And a quick pro tip, if you're not printing these shirts yourself, you can put your designs on placeit, post those photos online, and then collect the sales without spending any money on samples or models. Now that we have our graphic design, it's time to select a blank and actually put it onto a t-shirt. Now, when it comes to selecting blanks, you might be wondering which product or service should you turn to? Now, most clothing brands get their start by selecting a blank garment and printing their design. And we're gonna be doing it on the Bella Canvas 3001 wholesale t-shirt, which is available on the Bella Canvas website linked right down below. If you don't have a wholesale license though, don't worry guys. You can shop for these products directly from the Michael's store. So you can actually go in store, pick one out, start printing exactly the way that we're about to show you. All right, so as you can see, we applied our designs to an actual sample. And we did this really simply with the heat transfer. We're gonna link a video right here that shows you how you can get this from a store like Walmart. Super simple and easy for you to apply your graphic and your design onto a t-shirt. Now, as you can see, the, the results really vary. I mean, Cody's was really, you know, rudimentary in a way. I don't wanna, I don't wanna take too much shots. He was better drawer than I was in drawing this design. So that's why I didn't do it. <laughs> but the reality is guys, the better your drawing skills, the better your end product is gonna be. Now, since I wasn't a drawer myself, I went to Fiverr. Now the pros of using Fiverr is that you can really search for a vast variety, a very large variety of graphic designers that can help you work on your project. Now, projects can start around $35, $5. If you go for the $5 range, you're really going like to the bottom of the barrel, so you're not gonna get that good of work. Personally, I thought this was a pretty good iteration of what we had. It could always be better though. Like if I actually spent some time communicating a little bit more and getting a final product, this probably could have came out so much better. Now, the main cons that you're gonna go with any platform, especially Fiverr, is that sometimes the people that are posting their drawings aren't the people that are actually making those drawings. That's something that you need to know happens in this industry. So be cautious about sellers with new profiles. You always wanna look at the highest rated ones with the best comments. That's gonna tell you that they're actually legit and they have some work under their belt. So to summarize this video, guys, 
The better you are at your Photoshopping and Illustrator, the better your products are gonna be. And that's why when it comes to starting a clothing brand and designing a clothing brand, you have to really master some of these tools. Photoshop for the editing, for the graphics. It's great for placing screen printed designs and getting super creative. Illustrator for more vector art, like embroidery logos and your overall brand assets. Typically people choose one or the other program to master. And of course, always make sure that you try to sample your designs before you place any large production runs. And that's the reason why we recommend you guys checking out some heat presses. A heat press is gonna be a great tool and arsenal for you to quickly bring products to market. And we're gonna be linking some links down below like Heat Transfer Warehouse that can get you set up. So we appreciate you guys watching this video. If you're starting a clothing brand and you're really serious about it, make sure you check out this video where we dive two hours into the process of designing as well as logistics and raising funding. And more importantly, if you wanna pick up some new FTGU merch, check out our shop right below this channel and we'll see you on the next one.